Welcome everyone. Angel, what are we talking about today? I think today, well, we just had an eclipse uh, yesterday. So uh, I think let's talk about light, darkness, and gray, the gray territories, the in-between. I like that. <laughs> I love those gray territories, right? And we don't really speak about them that often because we're always so focused on what we know, what we can see. And we can see the light and we can see the dark, right? And so how did you spend your your time with the sun and the moon yesterday? Well, that's interesting because, um, you know, I study uh, and then cosmology for over 15 years now. And my teacher in Peru was like, no, go see the eclipse, take photos, send me photos, make a good prayer for me. And uh, But there was many signs leading to the eclipse that somehow I should not travel up to literally the night before the eclipse where I had something come up and I could not travel, I had to stay. And so I went out during the day at a wood delivery, uh, chop wood, so I had to stack for next winter. And even as I was piling the wood, I was just thinking about life and death, right? Oh, this wood is, has been killed or is, you know, for me to recreate life for my home and warmth in the winter. So that was like this interesting thing. And then in the afternoon, I started to see the light going down. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I had bought my glasses, my special glasses. And I was feeling more and more into it. I look at my chicken. They went under cover. My bees went back in. There was this very daunting light in the forest, almost like the forest was a little bit wary. So it's like, what's happening? Kind of this humbling. There's this great power in the sky that's mm. dimming that we take for granted, right? Because the sun is here right now and it's here every day and we don't realize you know, what it means maybe if it's not there. And literally at the moment it came, the message I got from the land is say, don't look at it. Keep doing your work on the land honor the privacy of the sun and the moon kissing in some ways having their intimate moment and so that's what i did you know i keep piling wood until the light came back and then i looked back at the sun so that was not like black and white dark and light mm -hmm. i was in the gray area literally looking at the gray forest and it was me experiencing this duality from that vantage point and you 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 literally did the the practice of chop wood carry water right whatever's happening <laughs> yes chop wood carry water right that's the practice the practice of living is living in that gray not just living in the moments of exaltation or in the lows of everything but even in them, chop wood, carry water. So that's that's amazing. Um, you know, here in Hawaii, we didn't really experience it as much as, you know, Turtle Island did, not to the extremes. And, you know, I sat with my teacher a little bit yesterday um, and, you know, they share this teaching. Uh, this is Grandmother Lani San Moonwalker of the Apache tradition, who is Yoeme uh, by birth. And they said, you know, we always talk about you know, the cycles of the moon and how eclipses of the moons are about revealing things in the dark. And they said this eclipse, right, when it is a sun eclipse, it's about revealing the things right in front of you. Hmm. And that really stood out to me. And, you know, it reveals, you know, times of like whatever's weak. If you've been avoiding, it will come out. And we had a, a crisis in on the farm um, revealing a weakness uh, in one of our animals that we were kind of aware of, but not to the severity, right? It really brought mm. it up. And I sat with that all day. Well, not sat sitting because I was driving back and forth across the island, you know, and really about what are the things, you know, that are in our everyday in plain sight that we don't experience, that we don't notice. They're the gray areas, right? Mm. Because we don't shine a light in them. We don't shine the darkness. We're like, yeah, 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 they're there, you know? And I think it's such uh, an important teaching, right? Because, you know, when I did a moon ceremony yesterday, and one of the things that we were talking about was grace, overflowing grace. And what I said is, so many times we orient ourselves towards 
what we know. We define things. We define light and dark. And we orient ourselves to make sure that we're okay. And we do that, right? Who are you? So I know who I am, right? Who are you, angel dear? So I can figure out who I'm going to be with you. And I'm safe, right? The light and the dark, right? I'm going to hide this from you. I'm going to share these things with you. But intimacy is about the grace, mm. right? Allowing you, angel, to be you. I might not even, and I know I will never know you. But this doesn't mean I can't love you as a mother. Mm-hmm. No. And I think, you know, as I sit more with the eclipse is, you know, in these times where we are and where we're at is, you know, we ask for things. Yet we don't experience the bounty around us because it's all in the gray areas of our life, you know, mm. you know. You yeah, know. I feel that really deeply, you know, we're always even the spiritual practice can become this battle between dark and light all the time, right? A certain experience that we want to have of life, maybe joy mm-hmm. and constant, you know, safety and feeling really good. And then there are the opposite, are the things that make us feel down and anxious and uh, like we are shrinking and, you know, we are not experiencing the full life. Uh, and very often we start battling there where we start reacting, you know, or we start naming it as something wrong. So we see those great cycles of nature between summer and winter and, you know, the spring and the fall and the day and the night. And here we have the sun and the moon. And so nature always constantly showing us that there is a necessity of balance and those two forces are necessary and not one is better than the others. And we need both of them in order to find communion, to find the sacred, to find unity. And that's the gray area in many ways, right? So how do I bring both into my life? I'm sure as you experience right there are days where, yeah, I feel pretty good, but there's also things in my mind that might be pretty daunting or might not me feel the joy, right? And my capacity kind of dance with the two of them and create uh, ease and space for the gray and space for the unresolved, the knowing and the not knowing together, which are two type of knowing, right? Two type of wisdom. Um, my capacity to be in that is what I think make me walk this red road, this this path, this middle way, and and mm-hmm. reconcile with both of them. Like the wood, right? I was chopping the wood, and they yeah. You know, some tree needs to die so I can make fire. That fire, you know, kind of make the tree and then the tree will make my fire. And it's like this cycle. And can I allow that more into my life? When do I resist it? You know, and a little bit about, yeah, accepting that this is a human condition. Because if we don't really accept it, we are always constantly being on that pendulum and it can be excruciating pain. Because even if we're joyful, we're already expecting, well, that's that's not going to last, right? So we don't really enjoy all of it whenever we're very present because we're always thinking of the past of what might come next. The gray area, a capacity to be in that allows us, yeah, life and death. You know, mm-hmm. it was this morning I woke up and there was this dead possum on the land. Mm-hmm. And he's been coming every night for months and I've been kind of building a relationship with him and this morning i saw all those uh raven big mountain crows eating something in the land and i went to see it and so many ravens and usually they are pretty shy they go away and i see this dead possum and i was like oh interesting you know possum is this animal that play dead he knows how to play the extreme right he's alive but he's going to play dead he's in the light but he's going to play dark and in order to survive right but he's not really dead. He's not really alive. He's in this gray area. Playing dead is gray, right? It's neither mm-hmm. dead, neither alive. And that's his way of going through life. And I was like, this is a very interesting teaching for that time we're in. This is what happened with the eclipse. This is a gray mm-hmm. area. It's not like the sun is gone. It's covered. Right? It's not like the moon is not visible. Right? This light is behind her. So it's like, 
reminding me this morning, I woke up and I saw that. I was like, oh, yes, this is life and death playing together, right? And there is this opportunity to learn from that instead of fighting it to say, okay, what is this trying to teach me? What mm -hmm. does the land was trying to teach me yesterday when she was like, you know what? Stay with us. Stay on the land. Look at the forest. Don't look in the sky. Observe how the trees. There was this energy that I can't really describe with that 60% dim light, something like that, that if I was focused with my glasses or taking photo of the sun, I would have missed the experience of my land. I would have missed what is happening right now here in front of my eyes, right? And we're always on our phone, right? And we miss the person in front of us or we miss the land or we miss what's really happening even inside of us in that moment, right? Because we're so out there. I think that was an interesting weaving that was happening for me, right? Yeah, you know, um, again, and like I said, we didn't really experience it as much. And I think it, it's that's so important, right? No matter what tradition you come from, no matter, because we both come from a lot of different traditions, you and I, and it's what does the land, what is the land experiencing now? I am part of the land. The land is part of me. And one of my uh, stories, and I'll tell it really quickly, that I love about solar eclipses was uh, that the sun, you know, told the moon one day that they wanted to experience life on earth, right? Like, I want to see what's going on. I'm up here all the time. I see it, but I want to experience it. And so decided to come down, right? Hence the moon covering the sun. I got your back, you're right? And came down in in the, story, in the most humble way that could have access to a lot of things. And that was a black cat, right? The Catholic Church does not like this teachings because they killed a lot of cats back in the day. And was experiencing the world as a cat, right? Can come in and out. You look at them, you don't. And then the moon was like, hurry up, hurry up, get up. I can't hold this position much longer. And so in the, in the sun's rush to get up back to the heavens, left streaks of sunlight. And that's why we have torties, right? And I have two torty cats. And I think what I love about that, other than, you know, I'm the jaguar in this jaguar and deer conversation, the cat conversation is the conversation of even the sun wanting to gain a different perspective, right? Saying that this perspective is only one, right? I would like to experience a different one. Hmm. And I think that's the gray area. You know, again, of like not thinking that you're right or wrong or that your way is the only way, right? That there's the binary, the binary of everything, right? It's really about everything in between is an opportunity to see things. I love you, love what you said in 60% light, 80%, 20%, all those gradations. And again, in, in, in the calendars that I, I come from and the cosmologies that I come from, what I always love is that time in between how the energies start mixing right it's a, a, a day and an energy doesn't just end at midnight right it's it's meets the next the next day and as they're having a conversation right something is happening at that time that never ever happens and all of a sudden you have four energies combined right the potential four energies four directions in that time and space as they are becoming and they're learning from each other. And I think that's the other thing that I love about the gray. It's an opportunity of letting go, not needing to know, and just being. Yeah, and it's always shifting, right? Because gray has so many variations. Dark and light, it's just, you know, kind of zero and one in computer programming where it's very clear. And, yeah. you know, I was really interested, like the moon is moving, you know, further away from the earth, you know, since the beginning of time. And in fact, millions of years ago, uh, our ancestors, or even before humans, that the moon was much closer to the Earth, which means the you know solar eclipses were much darker because you could not see as much the crown of the sun. And in millions of years, tens of millions of years, the moon keep going away right now, and the moon is going to be much smaller than the sun, and we're not going to have that kind of darkness uh, that we experience during solar eclipse. So even if we think, well. You know, there are many solar eclipses. I think it's every 18 months on the Earth and we can go see the next one. But in fact, we think they are the same, but they're not. That solar eclipse was very unique, that energy. And if I was not present, I could say, well, I can travel in 18 months, wherever is the next one, right? Because that's not the same. 
things have shifted already, right? There are even there, there is not a certainty about this is going to look like that. No, they are all different. And I really like to feel that, that this one was my experience. The next one is going to be a different one. It's not like no certainty of repeating. No, there's never none of that. Every spring is different. Every fall mm -hmm. is different. And even, even each of my moments of darkness, my experience maybe with the pain is not the same as the last time. Even if it looks the same, but if I'm really paying attention, if I'm connecting to the land, which means my body too, I will see that there are variations, the subtlety of the gray areas. And I really, really like that. Yeah. To live in possibility and not in absolutes. Welcome to gray. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you, you, everyone, for this time. Should I?